Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. Actually became okay. Now, what has been your worst experience as an activist? <laughs> worst experience? Yes. So many. A lot I of need uh, worst. I need one. The worst. The worst. You need one. Yes. The I, worst. I think the worst was when I was uh, rather cheaply captured by the security <laughs> agents. <laughs> oh. They, you know, they would try to get me arrested, but it was just difficult. And then, you know what they did? They organized a fake, a fake sleep through the post office. And they, on campus, they said I had a sleep, which meant you had a package. So I went to the post office on campus, and they said I had to go and co collect the package in the town, in the post office in the town, that they don't handle small, small packages. I had a little suspicion there. Uh, the president of the University of Pursuit, you know, was a lady then, Bamidele. She's now Mrs. Bamidele as a lawyer. So I went to them and I said, I don't be suspicious. They said, look, for Gary, you are no longer. And that was the only time where I moved alone without fellow yeah. students covering me with me. The only way I was hungry, I bought corn. I was some, you know, beans, like, whatever. So when I got to the post office, I showed them the sleep. They said, oh, okay, wait. And then the next thing, I was surrounded and got arrested. I, I felt, I felt ashamed of myself. But of course, before they took me to SSN for that illegal, I also showed them some, some pepper. I, I think uh, that is actually a chapter in the book, or you know, the tale of my abduction in the post office. <laughs> okay, how long were you detained? It? How long were you detained after that arrest? I think for about uh, four days because they took me from Ife to Ibadan. Spent a night at uh, LA, LA headquarters of uh, it used to be called the NSO, the National Security Organization before it became DSS, SSL and the rest of them. Then the following day they brought me to Lagos for interrogation. Where the second day they died. No, I was not. I was not. I was not handcuffed. Maybe that was why I was not on the on the trip because uh, when they arrested me in the post office, my head was spinning, and it was like how you know how we students know on campus that at the peak we didn't have mobile phones then that you could quickly do oh. Azul live as they yeah. through WhatsApp and whatever. But there were a number of divine interventions and some element of courage. But as we were stepping out of the post office. I saw a young lady who looked like she would be a student. So before the security guys knew it, three plain clothes, one, one policeman in uniform, I just quickly stepped behind, walked to the lady, and I was just going to say, oh, I'm learning. Oh, she just said, oh, I know you, you are our president. I said, please, go to the campus, go and tell them I've been arrested. Then they took me from there to Moray Police Station, changed the cars, they moved me from one station where I got to the shallow car put me in the middle of two hefty security men and would zoom out of effect. When we were passing the front of the campus, it was like a plane was about to take off. The campus gate was just fine. So my I was worried again. The guy would have told them on campus that he saw me being taken to the police station in Ife. But here was I being taken out of uh, Ife. So I did some thinking along the way. In those days, along the whole road, you know, it was not drug carriageway. Every hour of the day, there will be students of Ife who will probably be going back to school looking for vehicle. So I calculated that I may be lucky to see one of them. And as we approached the whole road, behold, I saw a female student that I know very well because the brother is in the Students' House of Rep uh, Students' Relative Council, a pharmacist. And so I was thinking, now I have to do something. So they had relaxed, and I don't think it defied for even had the air conditioner. 
So that so as we moved a bit close to the lady, I just shifted from where I sat as if I wanted to to speak. I just brought out my head and started screaming. Larry Arubunadi, Nasper, Larry Arubunadi, NS. So I was just screaming. And of course, so the lady saw me and I was happy. That day they became mad the way they drove through Ibadan. So the following morning, when they were to take me to Lagos, the the head of uh, the NSO in Ibadan, one Mr. Lau, now called me to his office and asked me, he said, did we abduct you? I was like, then he said, because your fellow students have said that you were abducted, I didn't know that my arrest, my abduction was front page story oh, in the Nigerian really? Tribune. So he showed me the newspaper. He showed me the Tribune. When I saw the story, oh, this is the story. I recognize the abducted. Look at me then, you know. I just, I smiled. He said, oh, you are smiling. Very good. He said, they told me you were naughty on the way yesterday. Now you are going to Lagos. If you do anything funny on the way, I've instructed them to shoot you. Then I smile. You know, I, you know, I, I smile like you. I don't know whether you are the one that smiles like me. As well. <laughs> then they showed me a pistol. He said, we have instructed them. They should just fire you if you do anything, you know, funny. But you know what? I did something funny in the game between Lagos and the battle. It's okay. look, I it, mean, so I was more quiet and truly I was a bit afraid, but I was also worried. Now I'm being taken out of Ibadan again. The students will think he's in Ibadan now, he's on his way to Lagos. To Lagos. So, but sometimes you know, destiny or kind of divine intervention would always happen. So, after Shagamu. You know, of course, drug carriageway, you know, Lagos Ibadan Express were built by the Obasanjo Yara drug government. I then saw this boss. It, you know, we used to have a group at the University of Ife called, uh, they call them core tours, not culture. It's a cultural group. But you have, they have you C U L, then you now have tour, T O U R. So it's a kind of, they do cultural tourism. So they had a boss, and the name is boldly written. The boss was ahead of us. And then I just saw Ife culture. Instantly, I knew these were students of Ife going on an excursion or something like that. Now, shouting was out of it because I'd done that and they showed me the piece to that. You will be shot. So the question was, how would they see me? So I was in the middle of the car. I was in the 504. And then, because it's a boss, it occurred to me that they were on a higher elevation. That yeah. if I could just maneuver myself, it's just possible that those sitting in front will see me. So as we were moving to overtake the bus, I was a 504 salon. I now did as if I was tired, that I wanted to sleep. So I just did my head like this and dressed and then started looking back. Immediately I shifted. The security guys were looking at me, but I, I knew what I was doing. And then as we were overtaking the bus, I now turn my head this way, like this. And luckily, the one, the guy who sat in the middle, who was a student in that and said, just saw me. They were excited. So immediately, he must have told the guy, Johnny, that's Larry. So they were flashing. They were flashing the car. They were, so the, the security guy were like, did you, those people in the bus, did you, did you know? I think I was taking from this. I think was that. But I was happy that now, they at least they will go back and say, <laughs> Yes, you have been brought to Lagos. So, we were breaking our heads against coconuts. <laughs> I like but that. we had the coconuts I like yesterday. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So, what has been your greatest memory? You know, of all Greatest your, memory? Yes, as an activist. Greatest memory. Talk, that's at the level of student unionism. It could be anything. student unionism. Anything. Just Journalism. Like an as an activist, yeah. I think my greatest memory was when um, a group of friends, associates, and comrades who had known me at IFE in particular and across Nigeria and who were now active in the media came to me and said, you know what? The time has come for us to move into AUJ. Let's see whether we can infuse that kind of dynamism that we had 
the campus and bring it to bear on the profession of journalism. And I'm talking of uh, people like Tundi Aremu, you know, Bola Jadibi, Yobo Sawagare, you know, Ayo Alukolokun, and some elderly ones who were already in the media, like Kayo De Komolafe. And they just said, because at that time, the Ladilawa group with Kayo De Komolafe, with Tuji Belo, they had introduced new trend movements. And uh, we were part of it, but just as maybe younger generation. And then we were espousing the philosophy of journalism with social relevance. So they came around and said, you know, the time has come for us to move in. And it is you that we believe should be the leader you know, of our intervention. That is the history of my journey uh, into the Nigerian Union of Journalists as a chairman. And strikingly, our campaign slogan in 1995 was a change 95. <laughs> I remember. I remember. Do you remember that? We came to campaign, we came to campaign at uh, you are a great supporter yes, with Kule Bakari, KB, yes, uh, yes. Femi, and this big John C. Faj, which yes. is also another story because they thought that you guys were soft sell. They didn't know that you were part of the of the fight against the military of yes, the fight for press freedom. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. I, I would yes. always cherish that that uh, you are the group of people who believed you, knew you, and they've, they've been there ever since, you know, for me. Okay. And we do not, we had our crisis. I think we left some, we left some uh, indelible footprints uh, okay. in the sense of uh, journalism and unionism in legal states.